Hi, Red Yoga. It's Jackie. Uh, I'm just making a short video for the YouTube channel to show you guys how to find stability in any posture, whether that be an arm balance or um, like a balancing pose, like a half moon warrior two, or even just something like a lunge, like a, like a grounding posture, finding a little bit more stability and strength in those. And there's four key points that I want to touch on. The first is your hands. The second is your legs. The third is your eyes, and the fourth is your tummy. <laughs> We're gonna go a little bit further into all of those. So the first thing is a super quick point. Um, something that I see a ton in classes are people going to their vinyasas, their chaturangas, their down dogs, any kind of arm balance with hands like this. And you really, 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 really can't balance like this because the slightest shift in weight is gonna throw you off. You don't have a lot of wiggle room here. What you want to do is spread your fingers out as wide as you can, like you're trying to palm a basketball. First step, super wide fingers. Second step, press the fingertips into the mat. And when you do this, you'll notice that there's like a little circle that kind of pushes in back, like it pushes your palm back. So it kind of lifts off the mat like a suction cup. So the fingertips become your brakes. When you feel yourself moving too far forward or back or side or side, you have the fingertips to press into and you have enough space in your hands that when you begin to shift your weight, you can catch yourself more easily. It also helps engage the, all along the length of the arm as well. So you're feeling that your forearms and when you rotate those biceps in, like your armpits want to kiss, it also helps a little bit press back through the upper back and engage your core. So all the muscles become engaged when you spread your fingers out. The second thing I want to touch on is in your legs. I'm going to give you just a little example. I'm going to use warrior three because that's the most common pose that people do this in. So if I'm in a warrior three, I don't know if you can see this because of the TV behind me, but here, this knee is locked up. I'm drawing the quad all the way up and I'm feeling that the balance is shifting from the sides of my foot and there's not really a whole lot I can do about it. What you want to do here is put a micro bend in that standing knee. You'll feel your glutes push back a little bit and engage all along the back side of that leg and also in your core. It also helps when you put that micro bend in the knee to press your foot down a little bit firmer into the mat in all four corners. Rather than when you have that leg locked out, you don't really have a ton of control over where the weight is being distributed in the foot. So, warrior three, always draw a little micro bend and that also helps with the alignment of the back leg. When this leg is straight, like you can see that back leg drops. When I put the micro bend in, it's easier to adjust my hips and get everything in a nice straight line. Cool. Also making sure that when you're in that warrior three, you're not digging your toes down into the mat because that's not helpful or productive. The other two things I want to mention are bandhas and drishti. I'll talk about drishti first because it's easier to explain. It's essentially your gaze. So when you're in any kind of balancing posture, any kind of posture at all, really, um, but especially for a balancing posture, what you want to do is find a drishti that is two to six feet in front of you, something that's not moving. So... For example, the, the shadow of the person in front of you is probably not a great drishti point, but something on the floor like a water bottle or like a mark in the wood would be really great to focus on. Um, there are certain postures where your drishti changes. For example, in up dog, you want your drishti to be up towards your third eye. Or what's another good one? Downward facing dog, your drishti is at your navel. So listening to those cues during class is... Um, it's a really simple way. If you follow them, you'll notice the way that, that the pose changes and the way you feel it. But a good default is if you feel like you need a little bit more stability, find that drishti on the floor in front of you and focus on something that's not moving. When you focus on something that's not moving, you'll stop moving. And the last thing is bandhas, which are um, a little more complicated to explain. You've definitely heard about them in class. There's three of them, and I want to focus on two. Um, the three of them, you have your Jalandhara bandha, your Uddiyana Bandha and your Mula Bandha. So Uddiyana Bandha is right behind your belly button, more or less. So what you wanna to do to engage it, um, there's a lot of really technical ways to do it. Just a little shortcut is to imagine that belly button drawing back towards your spine and then up into your ribs. So you wanna imagine your belly button is going right around here, right around where I have my E for red. By the way, buy these shirts. Quick plug. Anyway, so your belly button is going back, almost behind your heart. 
so you're drawing it up and back at the same time at a diagonal um, you'll notice it's different than bracing your stomach like you're gonna get punched and it's different than just sucking your stomach in like um, I don't know like you want to become a piece of paper you're drawing it up and in at the same time and you're feeling all those muscles like below the belly button are engaging and then the last one is your mula bandha which is where things get a little bit dirty because it's um it's right here at the base of your pelvis and there's cues that are different for boys and for girls because boys and girls are anatomically different down there so for girls what you want to imagine is like you're sucking something up into your vagina through a straw and for guys it's like you're trying to suck your balls back into your body to put it bluntly now that we have those things out of the way <laughs> the lavanda is really hard to keep engaged the whole time because we're not super accustomed to locking up that part of our body all the time but when you learn to kind of keep it consistently engaged throughout class you'll notice that the stability in your posture is going to change and when you engage mula bandha and uliana bandha at the same time it's kind of like this perfect storm of core stability and strength that keeps you engaged in any posture so the ideal is to keep all three bandhas engaged i didn't explain what a bandha actually is they're energy locks so when you lock your mula bandha, you're keeping all the energy flowing from here up. When you lock your uliana bandha, everything's flowing from here. And then you lock your jalandhara bandha, which you can do really easily by just making a quick double chin. Um, all the energy kind of starts swirling around in here. If you don't buy a ton into the energy type stuff, think of it more as muscle, muscle engagement strategies. Um, otherwise, you can think about it as concentrating the way energy flows throughout your body. At the same time, it keeps you a little bit more stable in any posture. So, just to recap what we learned today, kids. Um, four really key ways to keep stability in your postures. The first one is your hands. Always like starfish. Never like this. I don't even know what animal does this. Maybe like a deer. Okay, always a starfish. The second one is your knees. Micro bending, always. Never lock out the knees. It's a little bit harder for your hips. You don't have as much control of the weight distribution in your feet. Then you have drishti. Uh, listen really closely to the cues in class because they're not the same for the same postures, but when in doubt, find that spot on the floor. And finally, and most importantly, bandhas. Uh, for any posture, any time, any class, find that muda, mula bandha, that uliana bandha. Um, and just work through how to keep them engaged. Think about it throughout class as you're breathing and moving. Um, give yourself ways to, to remind yourself to keep those things engaged and notice how your practice really changes when you've got those bandhas on your side. That's all I have for you guys today. Thank you so much for watching and tuning into the Red YouTube channel and supporting us through this lovely time of being in our houses. Um, tune into our online yoga classes. They're every weekday at 6 p.m. and every weekend at 10 a.m. And I hope to see you guys soon. Namaste.